Good evening. My name is Marietje Schaak. I'm a member of the European Parliament for the Dutch Democratic Party in the Alliance of Liberals and Democrats for Europe. I serve on the committees on foreign affairs, international trade and on culture, media, youth, education and sports. But the role that technologies play and the impact they have on our daily lives, rights, freedoms are a central theme in my work. I'm really sorry I cannot join you in Berlin today, but I'm happy to share some of my thoughts via video. Despite the US federal government shutdown, a negotiating team from the US traveled to Brussels on Sunday for the second round of negotiations on the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, TTIP, a trade deal between the two largest trade blocs in the world that is initiated to benefit our economies, boost growth and jobs, and would set new standards for the future of global trade. Both the US and the EU have offensive and defensive interests, and the challenge will be to balance those or to negotiate a good deal. And aside from that, work on mechanisms that could result in a better regulatory coherence. Think about standards for car safety belts or tests of pharmaceuticals, standards for financial services or new technologies like nanotechnologies or medical equipments. The scope of TTIP is of an unprecedented scale. In principle, I believe this deal should benefit the EU and the, in, and the US individually, but also our historically close partnership, while the world around us is rapidly changing. But given the recent NSA revelations, many in Europe are concerned about trust in this partnership. And this I fully understand. Those concerns are very legitimate and we need more answers to many of our very important questions that we've put to our US counterparts. However, I don't believe that we should freeze the negotiations on TTIP at this point because eventually that would not be in the EU's interest. Instead, we should stand firm for what we believe in and build that into the agreement. After all, a lot of trade and investment is not sensitive at all and that will not stop from one day to another. But clearly, TTIP should not be used for the US and the EU to agree on new levels of data protection and cross-border data flows. This is simply too sensitive at this moment, also because the EU itself is still working on legislation. So there need to be specific measures protecting the rights of EU citizens negotiated with that specific goal in mind. We have interesting experiences when it comes to treaties and their impact on digital freedoms. Many of you may still remember the fight against ACTA, the anti-counterfeiting trade agreement, which I prominently led here in the European Parliament. The ACTA agreement would have seriously threatened and could harm the global and open internet as we know it. So luckily, and also with the help of thousands of internet users, online and offline, we convinced a majority of my colleagues and politicians in European member states that ACTA was not the way to go forward. And now many who feared ACTA at the time were worried about the Commission trying to sneak in similar provisions in TTIP. And I don't think that that's the case, and at least I'll make sure that it won't be in the future either. The Commission has been very outspoken and clear that it will not include ACTA-like provisions in TTIP. The Commissioner himself told me he's not a masochist. And TTIP is too important for the EU and the US economies. It would add 120 billion to the EU's economy structurally. And to jeopardize the Parliament's required approval by including provisions that would harm the open internet would actually put the whole treaty at stake. Now finally, I also believe that TTIP should be transparently negotiated and carried and supported among citizens. That is why I'm providing as much information as I can on my own website. And I'm pushing the European Commission to engage with stakeholders and civil society regularly and seriously in order to make sure that TTIP is an agreement not only benefiting CEOs, but actually people just like you and I. Indeed, in our globally connected world, trade agreements are no longer negotiated in a vacuum. Their impact can be felt the world over. So we should also use the opportunities of technologies to involve citizens in order for us to do our work better. That eventually benefits everyone. Thank you very much. I look forward to continuing our conversation online.